Welcome to the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast. Here we invite people and nonprofits from our local communities to share their stories and their voices. Through amplifying their message, we share their genuine human experiences that connect us all. Our goal is to make our communities more than just a place to live, but instead a place to thrive. Tune in to hear what makes our community so special right here on the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast. Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome to the Love Local Chicago Land Podcast. Excited to be here today with a good friend, Carl Fay. Uh, he's a local pastor, local artist, and overall uh, just a good human being that is also one tremendous leader. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, rest and how it's important to really find in your rhythm a place to be able to work from rest, uh, to be able to go into your week, to be able to create a life of impact, to be able to uh, create change, to do good things in the world, but doing that by making sure that you're restful first. So super excited to dive into this. So enough of me talking. Uh, welcome to the show, Carl. Yeah. Good to be here. Man. Yeah. Good to be here. And this yeah. is a third time, right? You were like sure one enough. of our first podcasts that we did with Love Local yeah. Law 53. And uh, we were on was I don't even know if it's brand worthy then, but it was maybe it's still Love Local Off 53 right. uh, to talk about the art show. Yep. Now we're here. Art show stuff. No. Different topic, but uh, yeah, let's it's keep rolling. It's it's like uh, we we don't like small talk. We like talking about things that that are cool and important, right? <laughs> we like going deep. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. I- excited to to chat with you here, man. I think from yeah, yeah. a work from rest standpoint, um, by implementing the principles that you've taught, uh, it's really helped. I know shape Carrie and myself, and I've seen other people along that journey as well. Just live better lives, even though they're they're busting their butts during the week. But before we get Beautiful into thing. that topic, I want people to know uh, that haven't heard those other episodes. So a little bit about who Carl Fay is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm married and uh, dad of four kids. Uh, we're bridging into the high school year. So we've got a good spectrum of, of ages, high school down to elementary school. Um, I serve as a local pastor of Prince Peace Luther Church in Palatine. And I'm also an artist on the side. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. So father, uh, uh, a pastor, uh, and helping other people, uh, do life better. And you're also, you know, I mentioned community leader, yeah. um, in there, um, within the church, uh, you, you have something, uh, that you're, you're leading the community and you're having it as a safe space for, for local organizations to be able to come to, too. So make yeah. sure you talk about that because that's a huge <laughs> piece, man, of, for of, sure. of, of, of who you are and what you do. You're not, you're yeah. not just a pastor. You're not just an artist or a dad. You're, you're a leader. Yeah. Um, Looking yeah. to extend positive impact well beyond the walls of the church, for sure. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I think um, when we first talked about this, uh, we, we wanted to talk um, about working from rest and about um, kind of tying into like the community leaders' place. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That meeting, you know, you've been doing it now is about a year. Yeah, so a little over a year, we've been gathering uh, community leaders in Palatine across uh, all sorts of organizations, nonprofit, government, education, emergency response, churches, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and even political representatives, um, all trying to come together uh, to better understand what each other are doing, uh, to support each other in that, see if uh, we can collaborate and uh, all these people are investing deeply in the life of the community. And with that comes a lot of wear and tear. So got to look out for ourselves and our health so that we can offer of ourselves. Uh, yeah, really well for the sake of the community. Yeah. You know, when you first uh, had the vision for the, that, uh, meeting. I didn't know what to anticipate or what to expect. You know, <laughs> being out in the community, I've met uh, other community uh, leaders and organizations um, uh, that are out there, you know, nonprofit or, or you know, that work for the state um, police, firemen, those types of people. Um, but I didn't know really with all of us being in that room, what that type of impact would be and how supportive <laughs> that group is of one another. But to, I didn't really realize like how hard people's jobs are, man. Like there's a, <laughs> there yeah. are some, there's some people out there that are like some silent heroes where you don't talk about them every day. Um, but they're doing so many good things yeah. for our community. And, um, it's, I think through that, uh, you know, and through now a year of meetings that you, you've led, you know, you saw people, um, you see people, 
thinking about self care and that type of stuff. But there's also people that you've just been going so fast. You're coming out of COVID. You're yeah. going fast. Um, really got a chance to talk about making sure it's important to be able to rest <laughs> um, throughout that piece. Um, so through that conversation and knowing like people are getting their butts kicked, um, I want to um, really kind of bring it back to the forefront of what 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 we want to be able to talk to and where the work from rest came from, from you. So we know people sure. are struggling out there that, um, and, and some are doing good. Some are t- taking care of themselves, but for the people that aren't they're, they're, they're it's where we want to go with this. So, uh, for you, um, uh, where did you, and how did you get into like working from rest? Where did you hit a wall? Did you, where did you dive into like learning all about it? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, it's always been a struggle in my adult life, I would say, um, or something that I need to pay attention to, right? Uh, it really came into the forefront uh, when I was transitioning from uh, the associate pastor at Prince Peace to the senior pastor. And uh, so I was, you know, installed as the, the administrative leader of, of the church in December of that year. And within six months, uh, I was really close to uh, a sense of, of burnout, honestly, um, could have been uh, one of those things that I didn't come back from. Uh, but uh, thankfully, had great support uh, network around me and, um, and uh, just some great uh, principles to begin to implement as uh, something as the wheels started coming off the bus. Um, so I think uh Here's here's the challenge, right? Uh, if you're in a field where you care deeply about your job, uh, where you care about producing good work, you care about taking care of people and being uh, available to them, uh, and then uh, you kind of pair uh, that internal passion with a culture of constant connection, and it's not hard uh, to uh, kind of uh, translate that into burnout. Um, and especially when you're really close to uh, people who are going through really difficult things. Um, and so put all that together and uh, it can become a really difficult blend. So what I found is you got to manage uh, your balances. And if you start with rest, uh, then you're going to end up uh, producing uh, more joy-filled work you're going to end up being more uh, available with the best part of yourself uh, when you're trying to serve other people, um, and uh, yeah, and, and those kind of things. So, um, what type of like uh, throughout that learning journey? Yeah. What type of principles did you implement, and what and and sure. really learn and overcome to be able to put into place to to be able to to develop that? Because it's not it's not easy. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so really I needed to take a look at what are my, what are my rhythms of rest? Um, need to have consistent rhythms. And for me, I always needed to have something, uh, that I'm looking forward to in the near term and in the, in the long term. Um, so, uh, how am I resting or unplugging on a daily, a weekly, uh, you know, a couple of times a year uh, basis and even a year over year basis. Um, what are those rhythms of unplugging from uh, work or output? And I would define uh, work as uh, you producing something or being on demand available to other people and rest as kind of that um, unplugged, um, you're not trying to meet a deadline. Uh, you're not trying to specifically produce something. So it's not, it's not just sleep, uh, but it's, it includes like play and recreation and quality family time, which, yeah. you know, it's like you get done with that time. And what do you really have to show for it? And in, in the short term, maybe not a whole lot, but turns out that's kind of the, the core of life right there. Yeah, it definitely is. And I feel like there's a balance to it, right? Yeah. I think I've, what I've learned is, is, uh, and, and from these types of conversation over the years with you, uh, but it's a balance. It's work hard. It's set your week up. It's like live a life of impact, 
But when it comes to, you know, your day of rest, when you're about to start that new week, really looking at it from that way sure. to make sure you're unplugging or, and, yeah. and I think, again, I think something that it's evolved with me through our friendship and through our, our group of friendship is, uh, and, and that we have is it's go for walks. You can go for a bike ride, right? You can do other things that you said you're not on. So, you know, yeah. I, I look at our no, local nonprofits in our community and it's COVID is very hard on uh, businesses and nonprofits, yeah. but th some of these nonprofits have seen things that they don't ever want to see again. And they've gone right. through things that they ever want to do again. But those people that are helping um, that um, and that are out there doing the work, like, sometimes it's hard for them to stop <laughs> um, when, because they, they, they're givers, they're selfless right. people. Right. So what advice would you mm -hmm. have to somebody that's in that, mm -hmm. that boat? It's sure. like busting their butt. They, they have whoever they're helping, sure. they, they need help. Um, but, but they also know they need to have rest. What advice would that be? Yeah. Uh, maybe you recognize in yourself uh, a, predisposition to kind of go other people's needs are more important than mine or I I need to be uh, more often on and helping other people um, that's a natural default mode for somebody who's who's a, a helper and seeking community impact um, but uh, I guess the reminder would be self-care is not selfish yeah. um, and uh you know, kind of that good uh, airplane advice, put on your own ox oxygen mask first. Um, so uh, then you'll be uh, better able uh, to help other people around you. Um, so, and, and I'd say it's really important, like not everybody rests well uh, in the same ways. So get in touch with what is it, what kind of activity is restorative uh, to you. Um, so, we oftentimes will reach for the really accessible, low-hanging fruit of, of rest, like turn on uh, some show that you can binge or scroll on social media or, or grab some uh, kind of favorite uh, snack uh, that may or may not uh, be healthy or a drink. Um, and uh, those things may help in the, in the short term, may bring some instant gratification or relief, but may not be genuinely, deeply restful and restorative for you. Um, so once you start to learn, like, wow, what kind of things are meaningful rest? Um, you were mentioning earlier walks. Like for me, um, one of those building blocks of specific activity is I got to move. I, I I have to move my body, and when I'm out in uh, in nature, in creation, uh, connecting with the rhythms of our world, like that is very restorative to my soul. Uh, so walking either by myself or with friends, uh, going out on bike rides, um, I've uh, coined the terms uh, prayer walking or prayer cycling <laughs> um, because I think praying on the move is is pretty big. Um, so that's one. One kind of thread, I don't uh, necessarily sit still well in, in rest. So in a given week, I got to have move time built in. Uh, then also family time. Like if I'm away from my kids and my wife too often, too many nights in a given week, if I miss out on, on uh, dinner time or bedtime uh, with the kids, then I just don't feel good about uh, the state of things at the end of the week. I feel like I kind of have this little bit of, ah, I missed something important in that. And, uh, so if I can preload or engineer a week, uh, where I have more nights, uh, at home and with family, I end up ending that week feeling much better about how it went, uh, family time and move time. I'm also creative. So if I don't have creative time, my wife even calls this out. Like you're getting really pent up. You yeah. should probably make something. Does that mean you're getting grumpy, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm getting grumpy and snappy. Yeah. 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 But it, uh, you found what works for you, where you yeah. where you find rest, where you get your, your energy from. Yeah, right? for sure. Which I feel like those go in hand in hand for a lot of people, uh, whether it's walks or going to the gym or yeah. uh, the family time, I feel like is something that it, many of us Stuff could resonate. Yeah. Something we need, right? We're better when we have those things and they're, they're, to, they're together. Yeah. So, as oh, but, yeah yeah and i guess the the benefit piece is um i notice and um other people around me notice that when i have uh those pieces in place and i imagine when i interact with other people who have those pieces in place uh 
you can tend to occupy a less reactionary space. Um, uh, so rather than just kind of responding uh, in a reactionary way, in the heat of emotions, um, kind of impulsively uh, toward a situation, uh, you can actually be a little bit more present, uh, a little more thoughtful, uh, and a little more fully available to what people really need. Uh, you, I think, can do a better job of more deeply empathizing with whatever it is that uh, the people around you are experiencing because you're not just kind of locked in your own, your own cycles. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Get out of your cycles or get out of your head and <laughs> in, in making sure you're getting your rest and, and yeah. what you need to be able to, yeah. to function in life. It's uh, This question is kind of coming from a, a leader standpoint. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know if we talked about it too much um, in prep, but through this conversation, it's coming to me, is I think about um, – like the people that are leading these organizations mm. uh, and uh, you know, you look at Kathy Mill and uh, with POC, you look at yeah. Erica Cinelli, like family forward, uh, Beth neighbors journeys, right? All yeah. really good people working their butts off but, and good leaders, right? What advice would you have to them and to other people? Like, well, how do they see this within their team? Like if their team mm. is hitting a wall, if their team isn't resting, how can they help lead that within their team? And what have you seen as some wins with that mm. within your own organization? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the things that Prince Peace has put in place are um, policies that help ensure there are um, boundaries for the work that protect uh, the the passionate, caring, helping employee who uh, is going to have a more natural disposition toward uh, uh, toward overextending themselves uh, in order to make that life of impact. Um, and so if you know that those are the people you're working with, then you probably need to create a culture where it's like we're actively encouraging one another to uh, take rest. And, and so part of it is just uh, within the context of us talking about uh, the people that we're interacting with and helping and the work that we're doing, uh, we also fold in conversations about what we're looking forward to doing in our time off. Um, and uh, so how brings we're, like a sense of community too, right? Yeah. Friendship, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and so once, uh, once all those things are, um, are kind of brought to the table. Um, the, yeah, there's some really beautiful things um, that emerge. I think we've also worked really hard to create a, a culture that says uh, it's okay to be vulnerable about the struggle as well. Um, so, and this was kind of moment of truth in that community leader conversation. The very first gathering that we had of this kind of diverse group of leaders who are just getting to know each other. We said, oh, what needs in the community are you and your organization working to address right now? And then after we had shared about that, and then we're like, now we want to know what needs in the community most tug at your heartstrings and keep you up at night. That's some big talk. And, right uh, and then, uh, yeah, we, we recognize uh, we go to deeper places in conversations. Well, we do. Uh, yeah. But uh, so the, this moment of truth is uh, that somebody uh, from among that group was like, oh, you don't want to know that. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that's, ex- that's exactly what I want to know. I yeah. want to know what uh, that kind of uh, sense of unresolved tension is, uh, the pressure point that you carry with you away from the job that would undercut a sense of rest and well-being for you as you're trying to make an impact. Um, I want to know that because it turns out you might feel like you're incredibly alone on an island mm-hmm. trying to address those things. And you know what happened when we open up that space? Everybody around the room got vulnerable and everybody kind of shared in that sense of like, yeah, we're all to varying degrees up at night and restless about unaddressed uh, needs in our community and people who don't have what they need to thrive in their lives. Um, it breaks our hearts. Um, and uh, and so to all of a sudden have this solidarity and caring deeply, um, yeah, uh, just 
made the room small all of yeah. a sudden and made it more uh, powerful and full of potential. Well, what if all of us with, uh, uh, you know, really big hearts, um, with really uh, smart minds working in our own separate corners actually tried to get to know what each other are doing and tried to look at each other more as collaborators um, instead of maybe this underneath sense of that we're, we're competition or we're just working in our own corners. Yeah. What if we actually locked arms and recognize we're stronger together? What would that, what would that look like, right? Um, Who and, would win? And you think yeah. about, but setting that tone of coming into this, this is starting to become a little bit more popular in our society, but it's not there yet of like, let's make sure we're, we're, we're good first, you know, the corporate culture that's out there of like, go, go, go. Now I think COVID kind of slowed that down. There's a little bit of a balance in there, but now you look at like, I look at like the nonprofit sector, which I feel like I've, what I've learned throughout this process is sometimes they're forgotten about from like the grand scheme of society but they're the ones that kind of are gluing the communities together and keeping the communities together and helping families move forward like they're doing yeah. that work so to open up that space for them to be vulnerable and to be yeah real about what's happening like well that's why you, you you come together when you realize that you're you have these common like struggles it might be different things that you're worrying yeah. about but you don't sleep at night or right. you know you're not as focused as you could be because you've worked so many days in a row and you haven't done that thing that brings you joy or peace in a while because this topic and and this right. project that we're going after which is is i'm not taking away from that is very important yeah. but sometimes it could be all mm -hmm. consuming for people. So to open that up for you, um, I feel like that's why you've gotten the response that you've gotten now that, yeah. you know, you're heading into, this would be the second year of the, the community leaders group. Yeah. What What's your, as you continue to look forward, um, I'll, I'll ask you one of your favorite questions. Uh, with the community leader group, what are you, what are you looking forward to um, as the group continues to evolve? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about, um, first of all, out of the awareness and trust that we have as community leaders coming together, that we're looking out for each other. So we're all uh, uh, coming at our work from a greater uh, place of wellness. Uh, then uh, we're also more confidently aware of what other services are there in the community. And so we're able to make better referrals. And so people who are on the receiving end of these services, when we have that kind of awareness of my organization isn't doing that, but I know somebody who is, then it's all huge. of a sudden, yeah, <laughs> yeah, our, our clients, the people in our uh, community, our parishioners, they're the ones that benefit from that awareness mm -hmm. and from that uh, network of trust. And, and then on that basis, uh, we can decide to intentionally lay into big topics, um, big unmet needs. Um, and I'm excited about what other networks have kind of sprung up going, we'd like to look at more with affordable housing. We'd like to uh, continue uh, to work on, uh, kind of, you know, uh, collaborate in new ways about uh, food and those kinds of things with Faith Feeds Food Pantry. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I'm excited about uh, what uh, creating that kind of safe relational space among the leaders uh, does in terms of ripple effect in the community uh, toward increased uh, services for yeah. people who live here. Hey, like yeah. qu quicker support in in some ways too. You know, what I, I think I've learned a little bit through um, this that I thought everybody knew each other in these circles. That, that was not the case. Right. Like I remember, it was the first couple of meetings that were there, and like it was like, "Oh, you do this?" Like, "Oh my gosh, you run into this all the time," and I don't know where to go to. So now, all of a sudden, you have a move, yeah. and you and that move is going to help another human do life better <laughs> or overcome something, right? Um, which is was so eye opening to me. But I go back to like, we don't know, we don't know, and the like broader sch schemes of the right. community, right? So it's important to know that 
this stuff is happening and that yeah. there's there there is true to me those the, the people that uh, that are in the nonprofits and the, they're like the boots on the ground approach to making our communities a better place like whether it's you're talking about affordable housing whether you're talking about um you know so, something else whatever it ends up being it's it's about those people doing that work so the way they do that work the best is by being restful and yeah. through this, wasn't even a talk on it, but by being connected to other people that are doing similar work. Same journey. Um, yeah. Because together we could be better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so beautiful, man. So um, when we work from rest, um, we know it, it leads to abundance. Uh, when we don't work from rest, we know it could be painful. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. What... Uh, some what kind of last pieces of advice as we, as we continue to close up, mm. what for you, what is, um, what advice would you give to somebody that's struggling to get through this mm. and that knows that they need rest and, and mm. start small, uh, start big. What do you, what do you do? Wh- mm. Where do you lean into them? Sure. Um, one thing that I would say is, yeah, we we don't implement meaningful change in our lives alone. Um, and so uh, if you don't already have advocates in your world for uh, wellness and uh, for uh, just self-care kind of practices, I mean, finding uh, people who can be in your corner and can help promote those conversations and be cheerleaders and advocates for you is, is a pretty significant thing. So um, whether that's a counselor or a life coach or a pastor or um, other friends in your corner, um, increasing your sphere of support is just going to be um, it's going to make all of those changes much easier. Yeah. Be real so. with the community about what you're experiencing and they don't judge you. They welcome you in. It's very yeah. powerful. For real. <laughs> For real. Um, yeah. And, and it helps. So uh, yeah. anything from, so they find, they find their people. Yep. <laughs> well, any, you any, find your people. <laughs> anything else there that, that you, you'd give it, give to them? Any advice? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, so, I would say, yeah, give yourself a lot of grace in in the process and and do start small or focus on um, smaller practices. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of power in a uh, very brief or or small daily rhythms that you can build in or weekly rhythms that you can build in. Um, yeah. So I think uh, I think that's important. I think here's a here's a set of verses that I think encapsulates um, uh, just it's uh, a little bit of a mantra for me. It's uh, some of my favorite uh, words of Jesus. Um, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And uh, I share that with you (laughs) because I think this is a bit of the spirit of what... um, uh, I'm trying to um, offer up and lead into. Um, if I can be of any uh, part of helping advocate for you, uh, figuring some of this stuff out, um, yeah, glad to talk um, more uh, with uh, with any of you who are uh, tuning into this podcast. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, uh, I can honestly say, Carl, getting to know you and your wife has helped me and Carrie live a better life. They just taking the principles yeah. that you've put on, uh, put it, put it into play with, um, just through friendship and getting to know you and seeing like, Hey, that works. Um, uh, and implementing our own life has helped us. Um, Great. so it's, uh, it, it's, it's a true blessing. And I believe in, in working from rest. And one of the things that I, we didn't touch base on, but th- that I love about the culture that you're, you're building at, within the church and uh, and uh, within your team and we're trying to do here at love local is like this is those weekly check-ins and how you doing 
Like, yep. and are, are you okay? And, and, and if somebody's not okay, like understand it, we all go through our own stuff. Right. <laughs> so to, to help, we're going to take turns not being okay and looking we, out for each other. Through yeah. that, we <laughs> help lift one another up. Right. And we support Amen. each other. So, uh, those are great principles to live by as, as this world continues to evolve and change and the, yeah. uh, you know, for the people that are listening, um, our nonprofit friends, like keep doing good work. Um, and for making, sure, making we sure, you. making <laughs> sure you're doing the rest that you need to, uh, to, to, to get yourself right. Uh, we're going to close this out a little bit differently, guys. Um, we're going to close out in prayer. I think we got a pastor here, so let him do his thing. Um, but, uh, before we do that, um, Carl, just where can people find you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm on Facebook and on Instagram. Instagram, you're going to find me Rev Draw. And uh, yeah, you can also email me at the church, Pastor Carl, K A R L, at pop.church. So yeah. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, with yeah. that note, uh, I don't have to say anything else. Take us out in prayer. Let's close this bad boy up. Yeah. Dear Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. And you do. Teach us how to live freely and lightly, even as you call us to some pretty significant work, a life of impact. Um, uh, Lord, help us, uh, everybody who's listening here, to uh, find their way into those unforced rhythms of grace, uh, into uh, joyful work uh, that answers deep needs in the community and uh, glorifies you each step of the way. Uh, we pray this all in Jesus' name, and everybody agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate the conversation yeah. today. My friends, get some rest and keep doing good work. Uh, life is hard. Building mm -hmm. things is hard. Overcoming challenges in our community is hard. But uh, if we get rest first, it's proven that we could go further. Uh, and if we come together, if we could even go farther than that. So get some rest, my friends. Talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.